morning, everyone. You are welcome to Sunday School. Uh, we want to sing from hymn 13. It's a song of praise. And we want to thank God this morning for bringing us to church safely. May God bless each and every one in Jesus' name. Sing verses 1 to 3 sitting. Verse 4, we shall sing standing after which we shall be led in prayer.
In Jesus' name. Oh Lord, our Heavenly Father, we thank you very much for this wonderful time that you have given to us. It's a privilege to come and sit at your feet to learn like Mary of old. Lord, accept our thanks. Father, accept our thanks. Lord Jesus, accept our thanks. Oh, what well, Jesus, we love you because you loved us. You first loved us. Lord, accept our thanks. This morning, we are beseeching you. Send down your Holy Spirit. Send down that great teacher. Send down that great heart. Come and teach us this lesson. At the end of the lesson, help us to have full cause to glorify your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Once again, you are all welcome to Sunday School. May God bless each and every one of us today through the lesson of today in Jesus' name. We shall be going to our different classes for the lesson of this morning. Um, but for the purpose of those who are here in our Sunday School for the first time, please, we advise you see our officers at the help desk at the entrance into this uh, tabernacle so that they will guide you to the appropriate uh, class for your lesson. Thank you. Uh, intermediate boys and girls, please stand up. And Yoruba Odo, Eine Edideo. Intermediate boys and girls, and Yoruba Odo. At the sound of the organ, you go to your classes at the gallery. Boys will go to my right, and then girls to my left. Yoruba gba ti awon Yoruba Odo lo si arin ni iwaju Yoruba gba kilasi yara dura ni sale Yoruba Agba, Kilasi Kini Ati Keji. Nibati, I want to wa ni Kilasi Keta Ati Keri, on yo losi Mbobe Sale. Also those who want to receive their lesson in Igbo, or Efike language, should also stand up and go to the basement for their lesson. Igbo and epic speaking to so please stand and go to their classes at the basement. Nursing mothers and French, please join those who are also going to the basement. Why French will go to the studio? Nursing mothers will have their lesson at the basement. English uh, adult classes, 7 to 11. If you are in that class or in any of these classes, please stand up and use any of these exits by my left to go to your classroom. English adult classes, 7 to 11. If you are in class 1 to 6, please do save. Please stand up and go to your classes here in the tabernacle. While class 12, we come to the center for their lesson. Students in class 12, we come to the center for their lesson. Thank you all. God bless you.
morning class. Uh, what is the topic of our lesson for today, please? The topic, yes, ma'am. Yes, please. The king dethroned and his pride abased. Can you say it again so that those are the back way? Uh, the king dethroned and his pride abased. The king dethroned and his pride abased. Um, can we recite our memory verse, please? The memory verse. Who is going to read for me? The senior memory verse. The senior memory verse, please. Nobody know. Yes, sir. This matter. This matter is by the decree of the watchers and the demand by the word of the holy ones, to the intent that the living may know that the most high ruleth in the affairs of men. Daniel chapter 4, verse 17. So our Bible passage for today is in Daniel chapter 4. Um, we've, we've got a couple of, uh, we've got a lot to read, but we shall go through, um, we shall go through the lesson. Last week we did a lesson on the three Hebrew children that were in the fiery furnace. Um, today we are looking at a different lesson. I mean, last week's lesson, we learned how... God showed his power to the king who didn't believe that there was anybody that could deliver his servants, the servants of God, from his power. And in the process, the three Hebrew children, they had an opportunity of meeting Christ, making their joy complete in that um, fiery furnace. From that lesson, we are now moving to chapter 4 of our lesson, Daniel chapter 4. Between last week's lesson and this week's lesson, there was a span of about 30 years gap. So it didn't just occur immediately after chapter 3. In this lesson, it was a gap of about 30 years. We'll be looking at some four discussion points. Um, but before we go into those four discussion points, I want us to look at the first part, um, which is on praise and thanksgiving. Then we're going to start reading from Daniel chapter 4, verses 1 to 3. We're going to see the Nebuchadnezzar praising God, thanking God. So can somebody start reading for me from Daniel chapter 4, verse 1. Unto all people, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth, peace be multiplied unto you. Two, I thought it good to show the signs and wonders that the high God had wrought toward me. Three, how great are his signs, and how mighty are his wonders. His kingdom is everlasting kingdom, and his dominion is from generation to generation. Thank you. In these three verses, you could see Nebuchadnezzar praising God, thanking God. Um, in last week's lesson, it was quite a different story. Uh, can we look at the verse, um, the last verse, uh, I mean, verse, te verse 29 of chapter 3? Verse 29 of chapter 3. Can somebody read it out for us? Therefore, I make a decree that every people, nation, and language which speak my, which speak anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be on in pieces, and their houses shall be made a dunghill because a dunghill because there is no other God and can, that can deliver the nation. Okay, thank you. In this, the three verses we've read in chapter 4, we could see Nebuchadnezzar praising God. But in the, in line, the one that has just been read, chapter 3, he made reference to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He didn't make reference to himself, 
it was the God of Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. But in our lesson, he himself praising God because he had gone through something. It's a testimony. This chapter 4 is a testimony of something that happened to him. And he had gone through some pruning with God. And after going through that pruning, he now came out successfully praising God, thanking God for what he had done. And that's what, in, that, in the exercise in chapter 4, is, is those uh, branches were pruned. Those branches that God didn't like in his life. Those attitudes, those things, characteristics in his life that God didn't like. God pruned them. And when he came out, after successfully finishing that trial, he was praising God. He was thanking God. That's what this for the first three verses. And that's why I would like to ask you that Nebuchadnezzar had known God of Daniel in the previous chapters. Why was his testimony and praise different to the previous? We heard what he said in chapter 3. Where he said that the God of Meshach, Abednego, that nobody must say anything against that God. But in this lesson, in this lesson, it is quite a different praise. He was praising God differently. Why? Please, why? We read the lesson. Who is answering? Yes. They are seeing the great things that their God could do. So after a while, he now impersonalizes it. That means he must have seen how great God has been in his life and in his, in his, in his, in his domain to give praise to the only God. Thank you. He had a personal relationship with God. Previously, he was the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Nobody must say anything against that God of these people. But in verse 2 of our chapter 4, the last statement, uh, as I read it, I thought it good to show the signs and wonders that the high God has thrown towards me. It was a personal relationship. He, had, he now knows God differently to that time when he was referring to God as the God of these people. It was a personal relationship. We are meant to have personal relationship with God. It's not, you can hear testimonies of others. You could hear about what God has done to others. But uh, do you know him personally? And that's what this lesson is all about. In this chapter 4, we're going to see something, some wonders God performed in his life. Miracles. Those miracles, those wonders moved him to know God. And that's the, ob that's the objective of we experiencing miracles in our life. When you have miracles, you have to know God. Yeah, it's just, oh, I, know, I have miracles today. Move from one place to one place trying to get miracles. But miracles are to change you, to make you know God to be closer, to be a Christian. That's the whole objective. And that's what has happened in this lesson. Let's move to our first discussion point, the king's dream. In this chapter 4, we, let's move to the king's dream. From, we, can somebody we read um, verse 5? Five, five, and, 5 and 7. And the thought upon my head and the vision of my head trouble me. Six. Seven. Go to seven. Okay, seven. Then came in the magician, the astrologers, the Chaldeans, and the soothsayers. And I told the dream before them, but they did not make known unto me the interpretation thereof. Eight. No, but no, no. Can somebody else pick it up from eleven? Eleven. Eleven. The tree grew and was strong, and the height thereof reached unto heaven, and the sight thereof to the end of all the earth. Twelve. The leaves thereof were fair, and the fruit thereof much, and in, in it was meat for all. The beasts of the field had shadow under it, and the fowls of the heaven dwelt in the box thereof, and all flesh was fed of it. Thirteen. I saw in the visions of my head upon my bed, and behold, a watcher and an holy one came down from heaven. 14. He cried aloud and said thus, Heal down the tree, and cut off its branches, shake off its leaves, and scatter its fruits. Let the beast get away from under it, and the fowls from its branches. 15. Nevertheless, 
leave the stump of his roots in the earth, even with a band of iron and brass, in the tender grass of the field, and let it be wet with the dew of heaven, and let its portion be with the beast in the grass of the earth. 16. Let his heart be changed from man's, and let a beast's heart be given unto him, and let seven times pass over him. 17. This matter is by the decree of the watchers, and the demand by the word of the holy ones, to the intent that the living may know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomsoever he will, and set it up over it the, the basis of men. 18. Thank you. No, sir, up to date. Thank you. So the, dream, the king, he had a dream. He had a dream. He saw a tree in the midst of the earth, and the tree was so high that it could be seen from either side of the earth. And the, the, the branches, the leaves, blossomed that there were birds on the, on the tree. And the um, be, be, um, beast were uh, under the tree, taking shade. He saw this, it was a wonderful dream. But suddenly, something happened. What would tell me something happened? He had something, yes? There came a watcher that from said, where? a watcher appeared. It's, where did he see the watcher from? From heaven, I guess. He saw a watcher from heaven that said that that tree should be ill done. Cut off. He saw that watcher, it should be ill done. And what amazes him, from the watcher told him about something about that tree. What should be done to that tree? What should be done to that tree, please? We've all read it now. It should be cut, but not totally. And then water should be poured on it. Yes, and then what about the spirit? The what did he say about the art? The the dew will fall on it. The dew will fall on him. Then he, he went on to say something about the art of that the tree to turn to something else. You know, the sister at the back there should be changed to the to animals' hearts. Yes, the art of that it should be to, the, the man's art to be turned to a beast. We are talking about a tree. Now it's the, the art of a man to be turned to a beast. And it should be there for how many years? Seven years. So the, the king was astounded. He was worried. What sort of a dream was this? And that's why I wanted to ask that why was the king worried? Why, what, why was he afraid when he, had, when he saw that dream? Why? What worried him? I thought the dream was so clear. It was a soy tree and all that. Why was he so worried? Anybody? I will, I will call people. Because, yes, ma'am. I guess because um, uh, he had like, he had a dream himself and he could remember unlike the previous dream he had, he couldn't remember at all. Yes, he remembered, but what made him to be afraid? When he, when he, after thinking and remembering that dream, he was afraid. Something told him that dream is significant to him. Yes, it was significant. Somebody at the back. Why was he afraid? Yes, man. God touched his heart because it was the hand of God trying to speak to his to him, show him something that is going to happen. He has realized that God is God in heaven. Thank you. But if you, if you look at what it says in that dream, he saw a tree. Do tree have acts of men? But he saw a tree and the act was turned, the act of man, from that tree turned to a man and the act was turned to a beast. That was the worrying thing, how could a tree? And now turned to a man, and then the heart turned to a beast. It was worrying. It was uh, somebody would be afraid. The tree being in the middle was there's nothing so strange in that. So he was afraid. He knew there must be something significant. He wanted to know why. So he called the wise men. He called the wise men, as our sister said earlier, that in the previous dream. He called the wise men, and the wise men said that he should tell them the dream, that they will interpret it. He said, it called, tell, uh, 
See, tell me, tell me your dreams. It is two, the two soyas in chapter 2. So we will interpret it. But in this case, he told, them the, he told them the dream, but they could not interpret. Why couldn't they interpret? They have been told the dream. Why couldn't the soothsayers, the wise men, why couldn't they interpret? Yes, sir. Yes, God was not with them. That's true. Anybody else? It is a message from God. Thank you. A message from God. It's only the secret things of God. And made known to his own people, to his own children. The people of the world can't know it. Because that dream was from God. Then he did something. After the six years, they couldn't answer. They didn't know the interpretation. Then he did something. He called Daniel. I want to know, why didn't he call Daniel first? Why didn't he call Daniel first? Why did he call the soothsayers, the magicians? In, in chapter 2, the lesson we did before. He called the soothsayers, he called all the wise men. They couldn't answer. He finally called Daniel. Daniel gave the answer. He gave the interpretation. So why didn't he go back to that Daniel? That who had got the, the spirit of God. He said he got the spirit of the holy gods. So why didn't he go straight to Daniel? Why did he think of somebody else? Why do you think of this wise man first? We've studied the lesson. Yes, ma'am. Just like uh, we human beings now, many a times we don't like to hear the truth, the word of God. We, we always like to believe a lie. I'm sure he must have felt that when he calls upon Daniel, Daniel will give him the facts. And possibly it will be the real thing and the truth about it. Maybe that was why he... He decided to, to call Thank the you. magicians first. That's true, yes. Go on, just say it, say it. Yes, anybody else? Yes, sir. The fake prophet, the uh, magician. That's what God's plan for uh, the magician uh, fakeness to be exposed. That's why he did not call true. Daniel. God allowed the magicians to show that they could not answer it. He let them go in first. They will not know have the, have the answer. But the other thing, there are other reasons too. We human beings, we are not constant. We drift. He had forgotten. If we, 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 we don't seem to be constant to, oh, this is the right thing that we should do. And seldom we Christians, sometimes we do the mistakes. We drift away, we stray away. And that's why we need to be faithful to be following Christ totally in every step we take for guidance in what we do. Though the third verse of that song, um, CGS 194, um, written by Robert Robinson. The third verse, I'll just say it. Say, Come down, fount of every blessing. It says, Oh, to grace how great a debtor daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy grace now, like a fetter, bind my wandering heart to thee. Prone to wonder, Lord, I feel it. Prone to live the God I love. Take my heart. Oh, take and seal it. Silly for the courts above. We need to keep on praying that God to take to seal this heart, bind it with fetters, because we tend to go to live that God we love. We pray to live God. We, we are not always constant. We some, seldom want to stray. It's only God that can keep us, and that's what is necessary. The Daniel in uh, Nebuchadnezzar called Daniel to, to interpret. And Daniel was, Daniel, the dream was uh, repeated and told, uh, the king told Daniel. And Daniel was astonished. The Bible says he was astonished that he's, for one hour he didn't see anything. Why couldn't Daniel respond immediately? Why did it take him one hour? What was worrying him? Why? 
Why couldn't Daniel? We just read it. Yes, who's telling who's answering? Um, somebody, yes, ma'am. Because Daniel has seen what is going to happen to the king. So the thing is very heavy for him to disclose to the yes, to king. That's true. Thank anybody else? And what? Yes, ma'am. Interpretation he gave. Because unlike the first interpre interpretation he gave, this wasn't a good news compared to the other one. It was a personal one to the king alone. Yes. Anybody else? Um? As in division is just like a judgment. Judgment, sir. Yes, it was, ju ju yes, was judgment. Yes. Depending on how the king receives it, his life was also on the yes. line. To say that to a monarch, to say that to a monarch was worrying. But something else I want us to look. He said he even went on to tell the king that he wished this for his enemies. In which the interpretation was for his enemies. It shows that there's some love for this king. It shows that some loyalty to this king. That I don't want this, the interpretation, to apply to you. It must be your enemies. He loved the king. He cared for this king. And bear in mind, he was an immigrant. Bear in mind, he was a slave. He was brought from Israel. This king has conquered that place. This king has demolished the temple the temple of the God we he worship. But he came here. He still wants to serve God. And yet, as Jesus said, love your enemies. Pray for those who hurt you. It's in Matthew chapter 5, verse 44. It says in there, we must love them. And yet Daniel did that. He loved this man. No, he had no indignation against Nebuchadnezzar. What's, what a Christian life. That's what, that's what Christ expects of us. He lived that life in a strange land. So, he, Daniel interpreted the dream. Who did the Daniel say the tree was? Who was the tree that died then? The Nebuchadnezzar saw in the dream. Yes, yes, sir. Huh? The king himself. Why and in what way was the tree, was Nebuchadnezzar like the king, like the tree? In what way? Yes, sir. A big tree, underneath, underneath a big tree, we have so many people staying, animals, human beings, they stay under the big tree for yes. shelter, for everything. So likewise, as at then, um, Nebuchadnezzar and his uh, kingdom, he has, he's like a world power then. So many countries, many provinces, and all, all people around him are benefiting from him. So he's like the world head. head as Thank then. you. So the tree... The Nebuchadnezzar was like a, the tree. So many nations was controlling the whole world. And people were benefiting under him. When the watcher was sent that this tree should be hewn down. What was Nebuchadnezzar's sin? Why was this tree hewn down? What was his sin? What, why did God say, he's in with credit? Why did God, the watcher say that he must be hewn down? Yes, I saw you. Because of pride. Yes. Eh? Pride, pride, pride. Because of pride. Arrogance. Pride. God hates pride. God does not like pride. He doesn't want anybody to be proud at all. And for that reason, he was the watcher from heaven. He saw in the dream. And let's just look at some references about God's view on pride. Proverbs chapter 6. Let's read verses 16 and 17. And can somebody open Proverbs 8, verse 13? Proverbs 6, verses 16 and 17. Sixteen. These six things does the Lord hate. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him. Seventeen. A proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood. In, in Proverbs 8, verse 13. Thirteen. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy, and the evil way, and the forward mouth. 
do I hate? Let's also look at Proverbs 29, verse 23. Proverbs 29, verse 23. Who's reading? Yes, read on. Somebody's reading at the back end. A man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. So also, let us look at, there are some references also in the New Testament. 1 Corinthians 4, verses 6 and 7. Six. And these things, brethren, I have in a figure transferred to myself and to Apollos for your six, that he might learn in us not to think of men above that which is written, that no one of you be puffed up for one against another. Seven, for who maketh thee to differ from another? And what hast thou that thou didst not receive? Now, if thou didst receive it, why dost thou glory as if thou hast not received it? Um, before... Let's also look at Philippians chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. Philippians chapter 2. Three. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in loneliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Four. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. You see, Pride, pride is dangerous. It means it's something, it's a mistake that follows people when they are at, uh, at a point of victory. When you are successful, when you are doing a project or you're doing something and you are successful, be careful because pride follows. It's a subtle sin. You may not know, you may not be aware, oh, I did this, I did that. Whereas God helped you. God does not like pride. He hates it. And that's why he warned us, we've read so many references, where God is pride. We should be careful of it. I just want to read, to look at some, some main ways, some signs of pride. Because we may think that, oh, I'm not Nebuchadnezzar. I haven't got a city. I haven't built anything. I won't talk like Nebuchadnezzar. But pride is so subtle. It comes into our life. I was, there are some signs of pride. I'll just list some of them. Assuming you already know what's being taught. When you assume you know it, you know it all. It's pride. Argumentative. Are you argumentative? You don't want to listen to others. You want to argue it out. It's pride. These are subtle things. Come on to many of us. You know, Nebuchadnezzar did not do that one. You make Look at Nebuchadnezzar, he did that. But me, I'm not. But yeah, if you're argumentative, you've got pride. All back to, to also others won't think less of you. You keep, I don't want people to know more about me. They don't want, I won't let them think less about me. I'm too good to perform this task. There are so many other tasks I can't be doing them. I'm too big for that. Is that the attitude? You're asked to go to stay in the toilet, to be a guard in the toilet. I'm too big for that. It's pride. You don't need to be a king. That's why it's a subtle sin. And I, that's why I'm trying to bring in some life application. See where, it's, where we commit this sin. Because we need to go back to God. That this thing must be pruned from our life. The topic of most conversation is you. When there's any conversation, it must be about you. Or nothing else, only about me. They must be talking about me. You must be media and we must talk about me. Is, is, is that your attitude? Consistently critical. Critical. You criticize everything. Consistently. You know it all. You're perfect. I'm just listing some of this because Nebuchadnezzar had gone. He, he, he was a king. We, many of us, are not in that position. And we'll be looking at Nebuchadnezzar's sin as the only type of pride. 
But pride is subtle. It appears in many forms. And it's something that we need to be begging God daily that I don't want this uh, bit of pride in me. Because he hates it. If I have pride, I can't be with him in heaven. He kicks Satan out because of pride. So I must not have pride. Nothing in my life. A belief that you are special and unique and can only be understood by other special or high status people or institution. The gospel is a leveler. It's not, oh, it's me. I don't mingle with such people. What, that is pride. We need to make sure these things are eradicated. If there's any sign of it in our life, we need to beg God, to ask God. Can't receive constructive criticism. Can somebody correct you? Can somebody talk to you about something that you've done, you've heard? Won't you flare up? Because no, I can't take it. It's pride. We need to go back and check. There are a lot of things I'm willing to learn. Super you are superior. I know it all. Defensive and easily offended. You are easily offended. Somebody say anything about you. You are very defensive. No, you are always right. Pride is subtle. It's a sin that affects everyone from childhood to adults. It started from the uh, Garden of Eden. It was pride that made Adam and Eve fall. Eve took, Eve took that uh, fruit. It wasn't supposed. God said, don't touch it. But Satan said, no, nothing will happen to you. Take it. And because she wanted, she wanted to be wise, she wanted the knowledge, and she wanted the, uh, the appetite for food, she decided to disobey God. And that's why we, she gratified her desire more than what God wants us her to do. It's pride. It started from there, and we've inherited it all the way, every human being. So that's why God is warning us that we should be careful about this. So these are things I just wanted us to look at, that pride is subtle. In Obadiah 3, we don't have time to look at it. He said, the pride of thine heart hath deceived thee. Obadiah 3, the pride of your heart hath deceived thee. It deceives us. We don't think that we are guilty of it. We think we are perfect. So the man of a proud heart never sees his own fault. He's always perfect. A proud person. I'm not always right. When he points to him, no, he wouldn't agree. He, would be, he becomes argumentative. So, in, let's go back to this lesson. After Daniel told him, he advised him, after interpreting that dream, he told him something, he advised him. What did he do? What was the advice? Who knows, what was the advice of Daniel to King Nebuchadnezzar after interpreting the dream? Don't you know? Somebody to help me. What was the advice of Nebuchadnezzar? Yes, ma'am. If he can use righteousness to cover his sin by doing good to the poor, Maybe Thank God will have mercy on him. Thank you. Repentance. You see, if we repent of our sins, God will forgive. Okay, what God has said, Daniel knew that will come to pass. The judgment will come to pass unless he repents. That's why today is a day for us to go back and repent of our sins. Because the day of, the, 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 the day of visitation, nobody knows. Nebuchadnezzar did not know the day of visitation. Twelve months passed before the day of visitation came. Let's look at that. When it came to pass, verse two, uh, let's read chapter 4, verse 28. Some 28, gone. Verse 28 says, All this came upon the king Nebuchadnezzar. 29, at the end of the twelve months, he was walking about the royal palace of Babylon. 30, the king spoke, saying, 
is not this great Babylon that I have built for a royal dwelling for my mighty power and the honor of my majesty. 31. While the word was still in the king's mouth, a voice fell from heaven. King Nebuchadnezzar, to you it is spoken. The kingdom has departed from you. And 32. And they shall drive, the, they shall drive you from men, and your dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. They shall make you eat grass like oxen, and seven times shall, you pass, shall pass over you until you know that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men. Can and you stop there? Just let's stop there. The king in verse 30, he went on my Babylon. Oh, this is not the city that I've built by my power. It's all pride. And the Bible says in, the, uh, in that in, the, in verse 33, as he was speaking, he didn't finish boasting. As he was boasting, something happened. As he was boasting, what happened? What happened, please? Yes, ma'am. Are you trying to? I don't. Thank you. He has the voice of the, the worship. Judgment. Immediately, instantly. He didn't finish boasting. He was still boasting, bragging. Do you remember that song? Our the choirs often sing for us. My, he sees all you do. He hears all you say. My Lord is writing all the time. You can be in your closet. You can, nobody will see, but God knows. He hears what you say. What you're saying, he hears everything. He was alone, looking at the whole place. And God spoke from heaven. Instantaneously, some, it, it turned to something else. What did he turn to? What did he turn to? As the judgment. Yes? Yes, ma'am. He turned to an animal. Thank you. He became a beast to be eating grass. A, 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 a woman being a king. He became a beast eating grass. The grass was palatable to him. All the dainty food brought to him. It's like bringing the dainty food to a cow. A cow does not see milk. It doesn't see cake, bread, all that. The grass is palatable. His heart was changed. His digestive system was changed to be liking grass. That's what God can do. You can't limit God. He created us and he can change us. When judgment comes, the day of visitation, he didn't repent. He was indifferent when Daniel told him to repent. Gave him 12 months. He didn't repent. He was indifferent to the advice of Daniel. And what happened? He became a beast. He was driven out into the field for how many years? How long was he there? Huh? He was there for several years as God prophesied that he would be there. And so he was there for seven years. And after that, so he, when he was there for seven years, what happened after the seven years? What happened after the seven years? Yes, sir. Speak louder so that others can hear you. He lifted up his head unto heaven and his reasoning came back to him. Thank you. He lifted up his head unto heaven. This was a king that was looking down on people. As far as he was concerned, he was the God, there was nothing above him. After seven years, God can change any human being. Your stubbornness, God can change it. It's better you accept God rather than waiting for judgment. You may not be lucky like Dan Nebuchadnezzar giving another opportunity. You may, judgment, visitation may come and you may lose your life and go to lost eternity. But Nebuchadnezzar had another opportunity. Judgment came, but he looked up unto God and his reasoning came unto him. He became a changed person. He now recognized there's somebody higher. There's somebody greater than him. That is no, no, not his God, not him being the only person. But there's somebody greater. And that's what God wants from us. To know God. To, have, to honor and respect God. That this is above us. Whatever we do, he sees us. He sees what we do. He wants us to change. That was the repentance. And that's why he said it in verse uh, 
Let's, let's read verse 36 and 37. 36 and 37 of our lesson. Daniel 4. Thirty-six. At the same time, my reason returned unto me, and for the glory of my kingdom, mine honor and brightness returned unto me, and my counselors and my Lord sought unto me, and I was established in my kingdom, and excellent majesty was added unto me. Thirty-seven. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the King of heaven, all whose works are truth, and his ways judgment, and those that walk in pride he is able to abase. You see, this is for us to learn. For seven years, who was the, where it was, why Nebuchadnezzar was in the field? Who was, who was ruling? Who was ruling, man? Huh? Daniel, mm, no, yes. Huh? There was no king. His kingdom was retained. As God has said, that time will be there, caught. It's going to grow. For seven years, nobody to go there. It, has, it doesn't happen in the world. Somebody goes, before even he goes, there'll be rebellion. They want to take over. But just judge, uh, God's judgment, for seven years, that stem will be cut down. It will be retained. And so also, this man, this kingdom was retained. Nobody dare go. But we gather that the Daniel and the three Hebrew children, they were the nurse taking care of the king, making sure because they knew, they knew that in seven years' time, he was coming back. And he came back. And his kingdom flourished more than before. When he became a child of God. I want us to see the difference. He was the ruler all over the world. But when he became a child of God, when he accepted that there's a God in heaven, his kingdom flourished more than before. That's what God can do for us. Don't think that you've got to the pinnacle that, yes, God can bring you down. And don't think you've got to that place that God wants you. Until you live the life. Daniel lived that life. And Nebuchadnezzar, he lived that life at the end. He changed. He recognized God. That, oh, that's why in the first, in verse 2, he said that he remember what God has done towards me. God has done something. We all have, if you all go back and reflect on our lives, we see what God has done for each one of us. But, to, before we close our lesson, I want us to look at some things which we need to be careful of. Because this lesson is for us. As the time uh, is for us. <laughs> uh, let's look at um, 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 11 and 12. 11. Now all these things happen unto them for examples, and they are written for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the world are come. 12. Wherefore, let him that thinketh is standeth, take heed, lest he fall. Thank you. We've studied about Nebuchadnezzar. He, 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 the man had gone. It's no more there. But this story, we are reading it for us to learn. We must not do what he did. He had pride. And was, the pride is a subtle sin. You need to keep yourself, in, to be in line with God. To know so that you will not commit that sin. Because whoever does it cannot live with God. God will not accept such a person. He hates pride. And that's why we need to take note of this issue. And that's why the, uh, that sin says that this lesson, as we read in 1 Corinthians, is for us. It's an example unto us. There's no excuse. You've had it. You've seen somebody that did it, that was turned to a beast. So what's the, what, what have you got that God did not give you? What have you? Wisdom? You came as a man. Did you tell God that I'm going to be a man in this world? Did you choose to be a man? Was it not God that made you to be a man? Was it not God that gave you the wisdom? Go back and reflect. My lifestyle, my ways, my speech, what I do. 
let's let's look at Deuteronomy uh, this choice now. We have to make a decision. Let's look at Deuteronomy 30, verse 19. Deuteronomy 30. Nineteen. I call heaven and hell to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. Thank you. It's advising us we are to choose life. And that life is a life without pride. It's a life of God inside us with no pride at all. And for us, I want to look, finally look at a reference to show an example of somebody that lived a life, the life that we are to follow, the life God wants and expects of us. No pride at all. We must not have pride in our life. Um, let's look at Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 to 8. This is what God expects of us. 5. Let this might be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. Six, who being in the form of God, thought it not to obey to be equal with God. Seven, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Eight, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cause. That is, we're talking about Jesus Christ. The, the perfect example for us. This is the person who is going to open the gate of heaven for us. He, has, he came into the world, lived a life that is now telling us we must follow after. That's what God expects of us. That you and I, to live a humble life. God, Jesus did not see it as robbery, but he humbled himself as robbery to, be, to, as, to become God. But he humbled himself to be like a man. He came into the world as man. He left his kingdom. Let us humble ourselves before God. That's what God is expecting of us. We must humble. If not, we wouldn't make the pearly gate. That's the requirement. The Nebuchadnezzar has done. There are so many subtle sins which we can see. And it's only God that can make us live that perfect and holy life. We must pray continuously. In that um, they mentioned to us, they mentioned some remedy what we should do. That we must love God. Continuously love God. Because God is pride. The love of God must be shed in our hearts. And we must recognize that promotion, position, cometh from God. Not from any human being. If you are in any position, it's because God wants you to be there. Not your choice. So you should give glory to God while you are there. You look at Psalm 75. Psalm 75, verses 6 and 7. Psalm 75. Uh, somebody's reading. 6. There. Yeah, go on. For promotion cometh neither from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south. 7. But God is the judge. He put it down one and set it up another. You see, God is the one that promotes us. God is the one that puts us in the position where we are. So it's for us to learn that no pride, there's nothing you have that is of your own. May God help us if, 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 just be to close the lesson. Let's look at James chapter 4, verse 10. And then we look at 1 Peter 5, 6. James chapter 4, verse 10. James 4.10 Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. Yes, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord. Um, 1 Peter 5, verse 6. 1 Peter, go on. 6. Humble yourself therefore under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. That is what God is expecting of us, to serve him with humility. And when we do that, he will be the one to raise us up. He will be the one that will put us in the all glory and honor. When we are in, in anything, we give God the glory, that God is one that made me, 
to get to this position. It's God that has brought me here. We will be able to give that testimony as Nebuchadnezzar did. And that's what God expects of us. That's our lesson. Thank you.
you are welcome back from our various classes where we have studied again about King Nebuchadnezzar. I believe our teachers have taken us through the lesson and uh, now we want to share what we have learned in the classes. Because this lesson is a very important lesson. <clears throat> and we are praying that God will help us to benefit by it. From the, the topic of the lesson is the King Nebuchadnezzar, the, the King, the throne, and his prize are based for the senior. And for junior, the king's pride brought low. So let me ask the intermediate class, anybody want to share what he or she have learned in the class in this lesson? There's a hand up there. Yes? That means yes, volume, buddy. I learned that it's not good to be proud and that if you are proud, um, God will punish you for being proud. You are correct. It's not good to be proud. And if you are proud, God has a way of abusing you. Yes, from the girls? From the girls, what have you learned? Nobody. Okay, from the other class, other classes, what are the learning points? that we have learned, that we have gained in the lesson. Yes, anybody, there's a hand up there. I learned that when God gives you a warning, you shouldn't wait for the judgment. You should act fast before the judgment comes. Exactly. When God gives a warning, we should act promptly. In the case of uh, Nebuchadnezzar, he had a dream, God sent warnings to him. And uh, Daniel gave the interpretation of the dream and advised the king to break his sin by, with righteousness, by showing mercy. But time elapsed. God gave him a long rope. For how long, as we learned in the class? Yes. Yes, stand up and... One year. Twelve whole months. So whenever God gives warning, we should be prompt in acting, in taking, uh, making use of the opportunity. Yes, any more, any... Yes, ma. Thank you. Whatever God did for us, we should not take the glory for ourselves. This particular lesson is a, a case study about King Nebuchadnezzar. It's a case study of the personality of Nebuchadnezzar. We've learned about the, the history, the story, but our focus, what should concern us most in this lesson is to understand why was King Nebuchadnezzar dethroned? We have all known him. What was the reason for his dethronement? Pride. Because of pride. And then another important thing we should, we should bear in mind that should concern us is that how do we avoid pride in our life and its consequences? Yes, we have to, somebody who has not spoken. Yes, sir. Sir, I think that the bottom line is we have to have fear of God. Fear of when God, we have yes. fear of God, we will ensure that will give us where we should stand. Because there's a borderline we must not cross. Once we cross it, like Nebuchadnezzar crossed it, by seeing the wealth God has given him and jubilating and thinking that that is everything and that he can ride on God, he can play God on the people. But God stopped him. 
Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Fear of God. Please, can somebody give us the defini definition of pride? What is pride? Yes, pride, pride. Yes. A pride is something that maybe you buy, you buy an item and then nobody has been using that item before in maybe in, in, in the history or maybe that country and you buy that, that, that thing. So the next thing and you say, oh, I'm the only one that is using this truck and this one, this one, you drive maybe the expensive car. So before you know, your body starts pushing up, you drive it the way you like, you do the way the thing, you don't even mind, you can splash water on somebody, you can do whatsoever you like. That is pride. Me. Thank you. According to, to this, our lesson, According to this lesson, what is pride? A hand up there. Pride is self-exhortation. Thank you. Self-exhortation. Self-glorification. Yes. Uh, seeing what one has achieved thank you by one spa you have accomplished something and you are not uh, you have forgotten that all good gifts has come down from heaven to you not your own so thank you don't have thank uh, you by taking the glory that belongs to god for our achievements that's pride not giving the glory to god for whatever god has helped us to achieve or maybe because we are talented, because we are rich, because we are beautiful, we should know that all things are given by God. That's the fault of Nebuchadnezzar. He forgot to know that promotion coming not from the east or west, that is God who promotes. So that's, that's pride. Well, as human being, Nebuchadnezzar has reason for his pride. As somebody who is not saved or regenerated heart, why was uh, Nebuchadnezzar proud? Yes. Let's cut. Yes, a hand at the center. What's the source of his pride? Because. The old man still lives in him. The old man still lives in him. He has not been recreated. Another person? A hand at the, behind you, behind you. Because of his achievement, what he has achieved, what he has done. So that is the cause of the pride. Yes, God has helped him. At that time, Nebuchadnezzar was like the world power. It's more than Biden. God has helped him. God has made him great, make him strong. He has conquered many wars, including the Israelites. He has fought many battles. God has helped him. He was a builder. He has built uh, the city of Babylon. He had a hanging, hanging garden, wonders of the world. But he fails to know that it's God who has given him that power. And how do we avoid that in our life? Because we are human beings. Let's bring back the lesson home to ourselves. Let's read uh, 1 Corinthians. Somebody should open 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Verse 7. 7. Yes. But we have this treasure in eating, eating vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Hmm. Again. First Corinthians 4, 7. For we may get thee to differ from another. And what hast thou that thou didst not receive. Yes. Now, if thou didst receive it, why dost thou glory as if thou art not yes. received Yes, there's no reason for boasting. All we have, we are given by God. 
And then one less, another lesson we should know is that God hates pride. Do we all agree? God hates pride. Can, please let somebody uh, read Roman, um, Proverbs chapter 16. Proverbs chapter 16. Verse 16 and 17. better is it to get wisdom than gold and to get understanding rather to be choosing than silver 17. The highway of the upright is to depart from evil he that keepeth his ways preserveth his soul Proverbs 6 I'm sorry, Proverbs 6 verse 16 and 17 Proverbs 6, not 16 Proverbs 6 6 yes these six things that the Lord hates, yea, seven are an abomination unto him. Seventeen, a proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood. Thank you. In uh, James chapter 4, verse 6, the, the, the second part of it said, God resisted the proud. What's the opposite to pride? Opposite to pride. Yes, a hand there. Yes. Humility. Humility. May God give us the spirit of humility today yeah. that we realize that all that we have achieved is only by the grace of God. We should not take the glory to ourselves. That's the besetting sin of Nebuchadnezzar. In that James chapter 4, verse 6, he said, He gave grace to the humble. May God make us humble. Amen then how can we avoid this subtle sin of pride? How can we escape the consequence of pride? Because we are all human beings. Pride can come in any form or shape. Maybe because you are talented, because you are well read, because you are, you are rich. Even poor people too, they have pride. So, how can we avoid it? Yes, it's a subtle sin. How can we avoid it? Yes, sir. One of the ways to avoid it is by gratitude. If we thank God for the minutest blessings and the great successes in our lives, there will be no room for pride in us. God bless you. Amen. We should be saved. We should... Seek God and be saved, be sanctified, be baptized. He will give us the grace to be watchful, to be careful every day. So, Nebuchadnezzar have gone. This lesson is for us today. We want to search ourselves. Let's read 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 11, to bring the lesson to a close. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 11. Yes, who have seen it? 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 11. And now all these things happen, happened unto them for example, and they are written for our admonitions, upon whom the ends of the world are come. Yes, all this lesson we are learning every week. We have seen what happened to some people. God wants it to be a lesson for us. So this morning is our own opportunity to search ourselves. Like the psalmist have said, search me, O God. If there's any crooked way, if there's a pride in me, help me to remove it. Give me the spirit of humility so that I will not suffer the same consequence as Nebuchadnezzar. May God please help everyone who serve with pride to heed this warning today so that we can avert the, the, the consequence can be averted in our life. We shall bring our review to a close by singing from our hymn book 171, verses 1 and 2. 171. We shall rise up to sing the song 
after the song, we shall be giving closing prayer and we shall go on our knees to pray. It's an opportunity for us to search ourselves that God should please abase us, keep us low, so that we will not suffer the same consequence like Nebuchadnezzar. the wonderful lesson you taught us this morning. Lord, accept our thanks. Father, make us doers of thy word and not hearers only. Father, anywhere there is pride this morning, please watch with your blood. And so, this morning we pray, save souls, sanctify and baptize. Send solutions to every problem, Lord, and take the glory to yourself, for in Jesus' name we pray.